Why, hello there. Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you're wondering why I'm using a hose to wet down this deck, well, it's because we just installed a dry space and it's completely dry underneath this deck. Let's get started. This amazing deck makeover turned out incredible, including the joists that I painted. However, after many discussions, we're going to do something with all the moisture that hits this deck. So we just installed this amazing, beautiful deck system, but we removed the roof, which is why every single amount of moisture that's going to hit the deck is going to go underneath and hitting our patio area. To avoid that, we're going to be installing this TimberTech dry space system from Azek, and it will completely reduce all that moisture that's going to be hitting our porch underneath and maneuvering all that moisture and debris away in a nice orderly fashion. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy installed and have a beautiful patio area as well. The beautiful thing about this system is that it's quite simplistic in as far as the materials go. There's really only three main parts to this entire system. The first one is called out as a combo bracket, the second one is a ledger F bracket, and then we have our large V panels that will be collecting all the moisture. The first step between this entire process is to measure the distance between our joists. I then grab our ledger F bracket and measure that accordingly. Now, I quickly figured out I needed some type of bracing in order to get a crisp cut, so I used a scrap piece of 2x4 to secure and steady our F bracket prior to cutting. Just keep that in mind on your cuts because it will tend to make the cutting process more uniform. The directions indicate to measure an inch and a half up from the very bottom of our joist and then align the very bottom of our F bracket with our marks. I install inch and a half long stainless steel screws to secure it in place and the nice thing about the F bracket is that it already has pre-fastener hole locations so I don't have to pre-drill anything. I do burn about a quarter inch from the measurement that I took previously in order for these brackets to fit in very easily but it also makes room for the secondary combo bracket that we'll be installing next and will slide right onto the side of each one of these brackets which is why we need a little extra room. Now that we have all of these installed, we can move on to our combo bracket. And the truly important part about the combo bracket is to make sure you have the proper downward angle accounted for at every single joist location because we want to make sure and guarantee ourselves that water flows naturally and there's no standing water at any point. The easy equation to keep in mind is to have a eighth inch downward angle every foot. So for an eight foot long section, you're gonna be lowering the channel one inch from one side to the other. The easiest way I found actually accounted for this is to make a measurement with my speed square at both sides, then place a screw on the lower side and use a chalk line to connect the two. This makes a perfect line all the way across and it really helps with the alignment of the installation of our combo bracket because I can just follow the chalk line. This avoids any odd sagging within the channel, just make sure you remove the screws before installing the combo bracket. Speaking of the combo bracket, let's get this cut to the correct length. I measure from the house ledger board to the structural beam and then burn an inch from that measurement. As I did previously with the F bracket, I do use a structural 2x4 to secure and hold this channel in place. Makes it much, much more easy to cut very straight, accurate cuts all the way down. So I would highly suggest doing this if you have to cut a system like this. One other item that you also have to account for when installing is your blocking. We have blocking at six feet on this deck and therefore I need to make sure we have a proper notch, otherwise our combo bracket is never gonna align properly with our chalk line. Luckily for us, cutting these sections are extremely easy with a pair of snips and by scoring the outside corner and bending the piece over, we're easily able to break that small little section off in a nice orderly fashion. In order to make the installation process easier when slipping the combo bracket into the F bracket, I'm using a 5-in-1 tool to make sure we have the proper flap in between the F bracket. 
I align the top of the channel with my chalk line, and once I like the placement, I start installing my nails. And as for nails, we're using inch and a half galvanized nails. One of the best tools to use when doing this is my palm nailer, and that's because not only does it save me a lot of time and effort when installing, but it also allows me to get into really tight knit areas that a hammer just could not do. Keep in mind that I only applied the chalk line to one side of each joist, so I always do that one first, align it with the chalk line, and then go back to the other side and install that side as needed. Having a 5-in-1 tool or an extra putty knife is always nice when installing the system because it really does make it a lot easier to fit those sleeves on the combo bracket right in between the opening of our F bracket. And that's not the easiest thing to do sometimes if you don't have a little help. At this point in time, I want to say a huge and special thank you to our sponsor this week, TimberTech by Azek. They provided all the materials for this entire project, and I absolutely love how this system turns out, which you'll see momentarily. They have an amazing array of decking materials, railings, and of course, dry spaces, and it's made of solid extruded vinyl for maximum strength, durability, and weather resistance. And if you want to check out their amazing lineup to choose from, then please check out the link in the description box below. With this deck having a beautiful divider board system means that we have doubled up joists. And a double up joist actually does affect the installation of our dry space because we need to make doubled up combo brackets. Now TimberTech does make doubled up combo brackets so you don't have to do this step, but I didn't know that ahead of time and therefore I have to make my own. The easiest way I found doing this was to actually score one side of the combo bracket and remove the tab portion. That way I'm able to run it through my table saw and with the help of another 2x4 I'm able to stabilize it and cut a perfect seam all the way down. You do want to leave about a quarter inch lip on the side that you're cutting because that's where the tape comes in. Now this is the ProTac tape from TimberTech and it's extremely sticky. This is the product that we applied to the top of our joist, which helps the longevity of our joist. But in this case, it's actually adhering both systems together while also making sure that we have a watertight seal. Once this product is applied and all the way down, we then cut off any of the excess and position it appropriately. Now this is an existing deck structure, so we did have to work around a few particularly uniquely positioned joists, which is why I wasn't able to use my palm nailer in a couple locations and had to use my drill. Before we install our V paneling, the last and final step we need to do is to apply some ProTac tape to the ledger board as well as the F bracket. We do roll the tape onto the edges of the combo bracket, but we don't go all the way down. We're just going a couple inches onto the combo bracket. And this is for added moisture protection to make sure that there's no moisture that gets trapped between our ledger board and our F bracket. It is now finally time for our V paneling installation. Now this material was more difficult to cut on a saw, so therefore taking a very sharp utility blade and using some type of straight item as a guide to score the material and then break it off is a perfect way to cut it at the right length. At the lowest point of our V paneling, I take some pliers and crimp the very end. That way, we can control the rain runoff a bit more smoothly and avoid any awkward dripping along the way. After doing this a few times, I did realize that the fastest way to cut all these panels is to actually just line them up and use my large contractor square as a guide to cut a perfectly crisp line. Plus, these V panels came 16 feet long, so I was able to get two panels out of each section. Now, if there's anything that you want to grab prior to installing, it's going to be this, soap. It doesn't have to be lavender scented hand soap. It can be any type of soap that you apply to the edge before installing because it gets really tight, especially these longer lengths. And therefore, to make sure it goes as smooth as possible down this run, you want to soap up the edge first and then insert it into the side of our combo bracket. Once I have one side in, I can then soap up the second side and install that as needed in this secondary combo bracket. This V paneling does an extremely good job of maneuvering its way into the flap of our combo bracket because both sides of the V panel are grooved. Once in, I apply a bit of upward pressure onto the panel and that ensures the panel is locked firmly in place. 
You might have noticed that there's multiple panels already installed, and that's because it took me a bit of time to figure out exactly which process worked the best for the installation method. And this one by far worked the best. I used three different putty knives to get the V panel in between the F bracket as well as the combo brackets on both sides. I then take a scrap piece of decking and hammer the back side in order to make sure I don't damage the V paneling. I remove the putty knives to make sure that the V paneling is positioned appropriately, and once it looks good, then we can move on to the next one. This V paneling is two inches shorter than the combo bracket, and that's because the majority of the moisture is gonna be flowing out of this section, and therefore we wanna guarantee that all the moisture flowing out is going to be falling into our gutter system. This means that if our span from the ledger board to our large beam is eight feet long, these V panels are going to be seven feet, nine inches. I certainly know most decks out there do not have a large pipe running underneath the deck itself, but on our project we do, and this is how I got around it. I cut a small 12 inch large section and then brought it up to where I thought it was going to be placed, then marked a few lines and brought it down to a flat surface. I traced out those lines to determine the general sense of where the hole was going to be placed and traced a circle about the same width of our pipe. A hole saw does an amazing job at cutting holes, however, you do have to have a stationary item, so instead of using that, I just used my utility blade to cut a perfectly sized hole. I then slit a opening on the back side, and once we had that taken care of, I could slip it perfectly in place as needed. Having a small section like this makes it much more manageable and it's a lot easier to get in place. Just make sure that you actually use the same general installation as you did previously, which makes it easier, but also be mindful of where leaks are going to be coming from, which is why I apply some ProTac tape to the top of where any of my cuts are placed. I let the ProTac tape overhang so when I do install the second larger panel, it actually applies to both sides, so there's no moisture getting through that seam anytime soon. There was one other odd scenario on this project and that's because we had a triple joist location. If you do have one of these, it's basically just the same thing as we did previously with the doubled up joist, but we have one very small U-channel in the dead center of this beam. I apply two strips of the ProTac tape at this location and once we have that all the way down, I can then maneuver this channel underneath our tripled up joist. Now that our final bracket is installed, I can install the final two V panels and we can move on to gutters. All the water that's going to be hitting this deck is going to go down onto the V panels and the V panels are going to bring it to this gutter system. But we do need to make sure that the gutter system also drains appropriately. This is a very long span so I account for approximately a sixteenth of an inch of downward slope every foot. And just as I did previously, I'm using my chalk line to determine the exact angle needed. As for the gutter system, there are numerous options out there to choose from, but I would just recommend finding one that's locally available and fits within your budget. This was a metal formed gutter system that was locally available at my general hardware store, and I applied the ceiling adhesive specifically designed for gutters. After I have the end cap on, I then position the fastener locations accordingly, which is 6 inches from the ends and 24 inches after that. As for the installation process, it is quite simple. All you have to do is really make sure you're following the chalk line indicator, and that way you can guarantee that you have proper slope as you're installing. With this gutter system, there are brackets that connect each section together in order to avoid leaks along the way. But once we have that gutter system installed, all we have to do is figure out where the downspout needs to go, and guess what? We are done! This dry space paneling system really does look amazing and professionally done. I absolutely love the look and the functionality to the system, but with this system, we gotta test it out, right? We are in Seattle and it does rain, however, this is the summer and we haven't seen rain in a while, so I don't wanna wait around till the next rain comes, which is why a hose will do just fine. 
As you can see from this close-up shot, this dry space system is really capturing all the moisture that's coming from the hose into the gutter system, and the patio area below is nearly bone dry. And I say nearly because I found this nice little section right here. Yeah, I need to work on my ceiling, as well as installing the downspout in the correct direction. Whoops. But we got it taken care of. And that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast of a dry space. Oh yeah.